gives me quite a, a thrill of all to introduce my old, very dear friend, Bernard Bragg, who has come here to Rochester, New York, to be with us here at NTID for a six-week period as our guest artist in residence. In representing the National Theater of the Deaf, Bernard has a rich background in professional theater in performing arts as well as in many related areas of interest. His life story, his career achievements are so many and varied, and he has received so many honors and awards. Really, I'm afraid it would take more than one interview to cover everything. However, we will try by selecting mm, some highlights or quote mm, mm, touchstones in your long career. That begins with the mm, 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 curator. <laughs> Bernard, I understand you were born in New York City, am I right? Uh, You also could say you grew up during, quote, the Great Depression years. Am I right? Did hey, that have any influence on you, you think? Hey, uh. Good. <laughs> yeah, but you, you did a different kind of painting or, or involvement in art, so you painted pictures in the air. <laughs> but I can say that I think the person also challenged you without you 
realizing it made you roll up your sleeves and start climbing out of I think it was marvelous. You still haven't stopped climbing, huh? You went to New York School for the Deaf called hmm, Fan Wood. That school at that time was all boys and military school. Is that right? Can you remember anything about that military set up? Mm. of that, that word discipline, very important and must overlook time in this day and age. Very important to have that as a beginning. Mm -hmm. Backbone. Mm -hmm. mm, Helping so many ways to overcome adversity in the future. I can remember you in uniform. I remember when I graduated from Gallagher College, came in the school as a young teacher. Then you in uniform and was from that much mm, using a hand, right? Lap of signals, marvelous. And I remember uh, winning all the trophies that I had in the lobby of the school on the shelves. Mm-hmm. Free trophy, 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 in competition with hearing schools, military schools like Valley of Falls uh, Prep, uh, Culver Academy Prep. I remember that. It was marvelous. I remember you. Well, I was a natural actor. I never taught you anything about acting. But together we set up the school of Fanwood dramatic club and one of the plays we gave was Dickens's uh, Christmas uh, Carol and you acted uh, Scrooge all different characterization roles huh? but forget that role <laughs> After our past seem to corrode again and again, <laughs> that's for uh, remember you passed the exams, went to a gala gala that college in Washington D.C. A few years later, I was asked to go to a gala that to teach. Again, we met there. Remember you and Sam. At Gala da Carlos had the leading role in ooh, you players. Can you remember the titles of some of them? Yeah. <laughs>
And you were bold to bring back Martin Luther King. Mm. Have a dream, yes, and you follow that dream. Would the day from? Never swerved from that. You graduated from Canada. You probably the first deaf person to graduate from Canada be accepted by the California School for the Deaf in Berkeley. Never happened before. You taught the deaf in California very successfully. Same time, took active role in drama in San Francisco area. Little by little, you began on your career or dream to become an actor was always in your blood. Eh? Set up your own one man mime of foe, I remember. Those days. Remember writing about you in the Galata Carlos Alumni Bulletin. Hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, winter nineteen sixty two. Bernard Bragg, master of mime. I was getting the facts from the newspapers, from your press agent, from advertisements you were sending me, traveling mostly in California, Francisco, mm, Los Angeles. You appeared in several famous nightclubs, did some acts there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Hungry eyes. Hmm. You had something special. I saw it myself. You would maybe devote the first part of your soul to traditional minds like Marcel Marceau, white face, striped black and white shirt, different mime acts. Then have intermission. Second half, you would have a pretty girl mm -hmm, there and would explain to the people uh, that now you challenge them, ask them to write on slips of paper whatever they thought would like to see you act. And the girl would go around, collect the slips of paper, put them in a hat. Mm. You, mm, mm. Think a few seconds and go ahead and act that marvelous 
My soul, my soul never did that. Very fair thing. <laughs> Uh, uh, reminded me what I said here. Mm. I said that huh? you never walk mm, stump. You always found a solution to any fairness that the people gave you. I called you, quote, the who denny of mime and said that, huh? You could go out on a long limb, <laughs> and even if someone gave you the, quote, impossible request, you still like who, Denny? You would seem to be stuck, handcuffed, gagged, blindfolded, put in a trunk, a lot thrown in the water. <laughs> So find a way to release yourself and swim to for <laughs> the one armed paper hanger. Well, then, you thought you had your own TV show in San Francisco called, quote, The Quiet Man. How'd you get that title? I've seen it here continuously in Rod Fester. They saw it on TV. Marvelous. During those years, while you were improving your art, National State of the Deaf was growing and finally established. You were very important and helping to establish that and one of the founding members did that happen? <laughs> Thank you.
That's that. Your quote and possible dream <laughs> started to come true, the most true. The MTD and thereafter mm, traveled all over the U.S., Broadway, the world. Uh, that's, that's marvelous. Mm. Seven founders. As the years pass, hmm. some events are happening, and some lady named Helen Powers, who was a theatre critic, became interested in NTD, especially your work, and started to interview you. The interview led to a book, biography of your life, called, quote, Sons of Silence. Uh, that book touched on several aspects of your life. Hmm. School, early career as a teacher, your one-man mime foe, Leading up and through NTD. It was a marvelous book. I recommend everybody to read that book, Signs of Silence. I wish I had it here. I had five copies and I wound them all out. You know how people are. They hold on to something good. <laughs> but for the NTD, Stasley was the main focus of this work and contribution to the world of theater.
yes, yes, as a special meaning to the deaf. Your work with the National Theater of the Deaf is well known, well documented. And that book, many newspaper reviews and magazines, mm -hmm. Ten years passed, mm, just like that. Whoa. And you have earned your, quote, sabbatical and started to think about taking a year's leave and doing something you always wanted to do. Can you explain something about that? Mm. So that was planned. Uh, the funding, everything, then you establish your itinerary. And you were together, visited how many countries, how many cities? Uh, 25 countries. <laughs> you have some, a few of the most vivid impressions. For example, you went to Ireland.
also went to Montpellier, France, and had a national conference of the deaf. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife were posted <laughs> from the Switzerland, Singapore. Mm. Mm. It's marvelous. A letter from Hong Kong. Yeah. Taiwan, China. Mm. Japan. Uh, he said, uh, quote, I didn't quite expect an earthquake in Japan. <laughs> you, you probably arrive and have to back up the plane. <laughs> Remember anything happening in Japan. Uh, I read, wrote, and mentioned that I have over two million deaf people in Japan. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Good. <laughs> you find a way to communicate through us and you 
really uh, talked what the president of the world a federation of the deaf in Yugoslavia. Uh, mm. Said is coming into the picture too for the deaf marvelous. Mm. Cut. that one of your staff was here at NTID. So, marvelous thing. Over here, we've had you involved in many, many different activities, such as one of the most important was to participate in our spring production of the phony Vanto a man, uh, an adaptation of a play by Moliere. You find find anything of interest or unusual about that play? Uh, of that I have got uh, feedback from students in my classes ain't me oh I'm learning so much from Bernard Bragg I think that's wonderful one of the important reasons why we happy you are here that your expertise influences students inspire them and we will have a model for future students to mm, study. We will always make vi videotape, videotape of that show. First, we have really put you to work here. We've made several other types, types of you performing short stories, dramatization, short stories, poetry, 
fake a spillion die monologues and other things like that. And you have come to my class in, quote, creative interpretation of literature in the sun. So, and Lexford and help give important tips to students. Have you any impressions from that experience in my class? Uh. <coughs> That's important. And it relates to your own career goals, your expectations for the future. You are still following that dream. You are still climbing a ladder. You don't stop there, probably have longer range goals. Mm. talk about the theater of the deaf. You were thinking now on a large scale in the world. You mentioned that a while ago. Well, if you think of kinetic imagery, the word is interesting to me because kinetic it relates to films, movies. Uh, uh, uh. (laughs) 
It's easy for anybody to understand. That's the point. You did that on your world tour. And what was the reaction? Mm. Mm. Talk about communication, uh, building physical communication, uh, so that you can mm, have contact with hearing and deaf both. Uh, uh, and Imagine the State Department, U.S.I.F., United U.S.I.A., U.S.I.A. here. They were very impressed with your work, too. Mm. So you have them to think about in the future, too, when you want to have those workers up around the world. Oh, that, that's marvelous. Mm. You're still thinking about that dream. <laughs> Following that dream. What kind of bring a lot of? Quote, the impossible dream. Really, appreciate this interview with you. I know that many other people will share my excitement and learn a lot from what we talk about. As I see it, there is still that theme goes through your life. Quote, the impossible dream.